next generation of consoles draws near, one of the biggest demands from the side of excited fans has been better performance. And in the context of video gaming, performance is synonymous with FPS. Most AAA titles are locked in at 30 FPS on current gen consoles, simply because they can't consistently handle any more without compromising the graphics. But given how powerful next gen console hardware is going to be, many speculate that this is no longer going to be the case and that 60 FPS AAA gaming is going to become the norm. And even though many of the games featured in the PS5 reveal even ran at 30 FPS in 4K, there were some that ran at 60 fps but on a lower resolution we'll believe it when we see it but sony also mentioned that the ps5 will support frame rates of up to 120 fps is this a sign that console gamers will finally be able to choose between eye candy and performance maybe but for now we'd like to clear up some misconceptions about frame rates so that everyone can be on the same page Namely, the terms FPS and refresh rates are sometimes used interchangeably when talking about in-game performance. The two terms are closely tied together in a context of gaming, but they're still two very different things. And you'll need to understand the difference if you want to get the most out of your gaming setup, whether it's your choice of monitor and graphics card, or the choice of the TV that you'll pair up with one of the new consoles that will hopefully support higher FPS gaming. So without any further ado, let's begin. First things first, let's get acquainted with the terminology, starting with FPS. In the gaming world, this acronym can mean one of two things, first-person shooter and frames per second. Naturally, we'll be referring to the latter meaning in this video. In essence, the FPS indicates how many frames are being rendered by your GPU and output to the display each second. Each frame is a static image, but when they're flipped through in a quick enough succession, they create the illusion of motion. The higher the frame rate, the smoother and more responsive the experience will be. Even if you've never used a high refresh rate display yourself, anyone who's been in a hardware store should have at least had the opportunity to see them in action. Sure, these displays aren't running video games, but in certain stores, all the displays show the same video so that you can clearly see the difference side by side. The difference between 30 and 60 FPS is huge, as is the difference between 60 and 120 FPS. This is why so many gamers value performance over visuals these days, especially in the competitive online multiplayer scene. In addition to being more responsive, games that run at higher frame rates feed more information into your brain, effectively improving your reaction time. And in a competitive environment, even these slight improvements can, and often do, make the difference between victory and defeat. All of this is, of course, predicated on the assumption that you can see all of these frame rates rendered in a single second. That, however, falls outside the jurisdiction of FPS. This is where refresh rates come in. So as we've said, frame rates have to do with the horsepower of the GPU. You could have a powerhouse GPU that's capable of rendering well over 200 frames per second, but this won't mean squat unless you've got a monitor that can keep up with this. Refresh rates indicate how many times the display can refresh the image each second, and this is expressed in Hertz. Most mainstream displays come with a refresh rate of 60 Hertz, which means they refresh the image 60 times. But there are gaming monitors out there that offer much higher refresh rates. 144 Hz and 240 Hz are two of the most common refresh rates after 60 Hz, but 75 Hz, 120 Hz, and 200 Hz monitors are cropping up more and more. As you can see, while both of these terms have to do with the same thing, they are very much different. The GPU renders as many frames as it's capable of. The higher, the better. But you have to refer to both the FPS and the refresh rate to determine how smooth your gaming experience will be. For example, you could have a standard 60Hz monitor, but if your GPU can only handle 40 frames per second, then that's all you'll see. On the other hand, if you've got a 60Hz monitor and your beast of a GPU is dishing out 100 frames per second, well, tough luck. You'll only get to see 60 frames that your monitor can handle. In gaming terminology, the refresh rate of your monitor places a cap on your effective FPS stat. You need to upgrade your refresh rate before you can gain the benefits of higher FPS. Now if only this was all there is to it. Unfortunately, when the FPS and refresh rates are out of sync, 
you get some nasty results, specifically when the FPS your graphics card is dishing out is higher than the refresh rate of your monitor. This is when we are treated to a problem known as screen tearing. You see, even though the monitor cannot keep up with the GPU, it's trying its darn best. So sometimes, the top and the bottom halves of the screen end up displaying two or more different frames. Fortunately, there are ways to get around this issue. This is done through the VSync option or one of the variable refresh rate technologies. We've already made videos on these topics, which we will link in the description, so check them out if you're interested in a more detailed explanation. In any case, here are the basics. VSync stands for Vertical Synchronization and works in a fairly straightforward manner. We've said that you can think of the refresh rate of your monitor as a hard cap on your FPS. But as we've seen, the monitor is still trying its best to display all of the frames the GPU is rendering. Enabling the VSync option in games enforces this hard cap to make sure the GPU and monitor don't fall out of sync. Unfortunately, VSync comes with its own fair share of downsides. It can lead to noticeable stuttering, it impacts the overall performance, and it can even result in input lag. It's better than nothing in the extreme cases where there are no other options, but preferably you should look towards the other options. Speaking of which, VRR stands for Variable Refresh Rate. This technology is used by certain monitors to automatically change their refresh rate to match the frame rate of the game you're playing. Not only does this get rid of the synchronization and screen tearing issues, but since the technology comes with the monitor and doesn't rely on the graphics card, it also doesn't produce any of the frame rate drops and stuttering commonly associated with regular VSync. VRR monitors come in two distinct flavors. Some utilize AMD's FreeSync technology, while others utilize NVIDIA's G-Sync technology. The only catch is that your VRR technology has to match your GPU manufacturer. So, FreeSync if you're using an AMD GPU, and G-Sync if you're an NVIDIA user. Most high-performance monitors come with one of these two technologies anyway, so all you need to worry about is getting the right one. As we've said, we've made a video comparing and contrasting these two technologies, so check out the link in the description if you'd like a comprehensive guide. The short of it is this. As the name implies, FreeSync is much more affordable and found in more monitors than G-Sync. Conversely, G-Sync offers better performance and packs some convenient extra features on the side. And that about does it for this video. To summarize, FPS indicates the number of frames your GPU is rendering each second, while refresh rates tell you how many times in a second the monitor can refresh the displayed image. The two are closely tied together in the context of gaming, but are still very much their own separate things. Most importantly, they don't want to be in Discord with one another. There's no point in getting a powerful GPU if you're going to use a 60Hz monitor, just like there's no use in getting a high refresh rate monitor if you're going to use a subpar GPU. Picking the right monitor for the right build can be a challenge, so if you'd like to skip the trouble, we'd like to refer you to our guides for the best custom PC builds for all budgets. Fair warning, the monitors aren't included in the budget, but each one has been carefully chosen to bring out the best in a PC. On the other hand, if you're just looking for a monitor, check out our guide for the best gaming monitors currently available. We update all of our guides to always be current and feature the latest and best components, so you can't go wrong either way. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. You can let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, and leaving a comment. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to enable notifications. We upload a new video every week, so keep your eyes peeled for that notification bell. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.